Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KeepAdger.com. I'm out here with... Nick. <laughs> with Nick, <laughs> one of the engineers from Q. And we are going to talk about some of the new new, even though this is the older new, technically, mm -hmm. which is their new drop-in trigger for pretty much your AR-15 pattern rifles. First off, what's on everyone's mind is the fact that we have sweet matching t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And second thing on everyone's mind is this trigger, since we just mentioned it. So what was, I guess if we back up, how did this project come about? You had mentioned it kind of briefly in conversation, but what became, where where'd the need arise to make a trigger? Uh, we did not like approach the trigger as like a project that we really wanted to do. It's really based in not being able to get triggers. There are a lot of good AR triggers out there available and we can't get get them. We can't get enough of them. Um, so it really is based in a supply chain issue for us. And then some design fundamental things that we thought we could do a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as, at least for manufacturability, the ability to assemble it easily, uh, and can kind of combine all those things to get us more triggers faster that are better. That's basically the, the background. Nice. Because you guys went through a couple different triggers with respect to like honey badgers and stuff, I know. Yep, yeah, we, we have run AR Golds, ALGs, Geisley. Uh, we've shipped them all, they're all good triggers. Um, we just can't get enough of them, so. Right on, so you guys undertook this small little project. Yes, and it's important, like we, Triggers are an extremely difficult thing to do and a mm -hmm. big thing to take on from a design standpoint. It has yeah. a lot of liability built in, so it's important to us. It's important enough to us to to do it ourselves. So a lot of this is is the hard engineering work, which is math, tolerance stacks, and a buttload of testing. All right, very cool. Um, yeah, I guess we'll dip into kind of how this thing started then, as far as how you guys tackled the problem. Considerations you had mentioned were tolerance stacking a minute ago, and so also in talking with you, balance. Like, how how did you guys address some of these things with the trigger? Um, as I said before, there are a lot of good triggers out there. We kind of took the best of the stuff we liked, and then tried to um, fix isn't really the right word, but do better at the things we didn't like. Okay. Um, so some of those considerations just from a functional standpoint are uh, the tolerance stack is a total, which is just to guarantee that the trigger always fits in the gun and always is safe within its mm -hmm. size considerations. Um, balance has a lot to do with drop safety. Quick question on with respect to safety. I know your guys' selector specifically when you're not using, like on the sugar weasel, you have mil spec and yeah. all that stuff but when you're not using, it's like a 70 degree throw, right? 75 in the Honey Badger. 75 in the which Honey is Badger. Which is a particular, that that allows the diameter of the selector shaft to always guarantee you're on the round part. And that, okay. that guarantees that the trigger stack stays on the safe side. If you go to a 45, which what we saw is you're now on, the, on a corner which is mm -hmm. extremely difficult to control from a dimensional standpoint. And it's very difficult to guarantee that it's gonna fit in any lower as it comes off of the shelf. Gotcha, and you guys ran, you guys we landed didn't. on 75 because it that's, was safe. Yep, that's what the math says it has to be. Okay, and so with that, were there considerations, does that play into the trigger design or no? That's just a separate issue with the safety. As far as, a, I mean, all ARs are generally a trigger block safety, that's what the selector's doing, and that's just putting this pad in the right location. Okay. And then guaranteeing that it stays there. Okay, sorry, I digress. You were talking about uh, balance. Uh, balance, I mean, balance uh, where you can get it. it in a hammer-fired gun like this, it, it's very difficult to balance a hammer, because it has mm -hmm. to act as a hammer. Uh, but the other considerations, we try to balance, like this entire sub-assembly is balanced through the pinhole so that okay. it doesn't want to, if you were to drop the gun, no matter what orientation you would drop it, it wouldn't impart rotation into the, into the trigger itself. Interesting. Yeah, so we try to balance anything that's sitting on a pin uh, as well as we can. Um, this part's not reflect, 
we change everything all day, every day. Right. So these aren't all the most current things. The but new, new, new. So this subassembly has to be balanced along with the spring, and, and this axe is one thing that needs to be balanced. Along with that, we balance the sear, not in this particular rendition, but in a part that I don't have yet. Okay. Uh, and then the rest of it is all reducing the mass. I know that this housing looks really cool, but that wasn't the point. Like it was to try and get it as light as possible. It's actually, yeah, and you got rid of a lot of material that's yep. on this one. And that's all just to keep things from shaking around when it makes a hard impact because we're sitting on the two pins. Because the mass would it wants it. to It wants to okay. shake around and we try to reduce that as much as possible. We also added this little bumper that just takes up all the extra space. So it makes sure that you're kind of no, preloaded. So it actually like sits like, flush. Like, yeah. Okay. And it doesn't want to vibrate if you make a hard impact on the gun. All, right. All that stuff is just to make it safer. Huh. Very cool. Um, one of the cooler things I've seen here is how you guys map trigger trace and stuff, like with all the fixed triggers. Have you guys, I'm sure you guys have been doing that with these. And to that end, what kind of, I'm assuming these are non-adjustable, like this is what each and every one is pre-travel, like first stage, second stage, all that. So what, what are we looking at with these? Or what are we, with these, it's probably all kinds of things since it's always changing, but right. what is it going to be when these come out? Uh, so our goals are to not be, I, I think it, as a whole in queue, including the fixed trigger and this trigger, like we're not, our goals are never to be the lightest. Yeah. Uh, it's to be, the lightest, safe, low Practical. creep, uh, crisp triggers that work all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so our goals with this one were basically to get it to about three pounds at peak trigger pull. Okay. Um, I actually am hopeful that it'll be a little lower than that, but we're, that's kind of our goal is to stay around the three pound peak trigger pull mark. Uh, very clean wall off the first stage. So it's a two stage trigger. I want a really nice clean wall. And then when it breaks, very little creep. Yeah. Um, all that's part of the geometry and how it, how this works together. And I say we we take a lot from other trigger designs. Like all they have, like it still has to have a hammer and it has to have a trigger. Yeah, it has to do a basic get set away of things. From right. X, so y, Z. it's not like we invented a, how a trigger works here, mm -hmm. but we try to optimize every little area to make it uh, be the best that it can. Okay. So and here so we're going to do like, it's about a half pound in the first stage, okay. a clean wall, three pounds to the break or two and a half pounds to the break, somewhere in between there. Uh, and then it's going to, it's very low over travel without a selector shaft. Yeah. In here. I, yeah. Extremely short reset. The reset. It's <laughs> yeah. insanely short reset. Yeah. Very like light reset. This guy. Um, and very short. So. And this is your check. test one, right? This is actually identical to this one. I just put it in here to, okay. to show. So, but yeah, we, we're gonna be like very crisp off of the wall. And then that reset distance is tiny. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, those are the goals. Along with that, we have to make some considerations to eliminate the possibility of trigger slap uh, and make sure that everything's fast enough to work when the guns are, when, yeah. you, when you get really fast people behind the trigger. Okay. I don't even thought about that. All right. Very, very cool. And so I was talking to Drew, and I'll talk to him in a second about testing, but that upper receiver, those are test marks, right? These are, yeah, we actually have lasered this receiver with a set spacing so that when we watch it in high speed video, we can actually make very precise measurements. Increments. And then because we have the, we know the speed we can, or we know the time we can get speed. Like we can get a whole curve of how everything's working as it fires. That is pretty uh, cool. And then back here where we have a window so we can watch as everything comes closed. Gotcha. Like what happens in the buffer system. Huh. So we, okay. we, cut up, we cut these open just to do that. Uh, and then this guy, so that's a, this is our drop test gun. Um, oh, you would drop that magazine. It's got, it's loaded. <laughs> or it's not loaded, it's full of, it's got backward cards. Full of weight. It's full of weight, yeah. So, and this is to Very simulate. Curious, they're all smashed cartridges. In backwards, yeah. yeah. 
So we have to do our drop tests basically in the heaviest configuration. So we have a full 16 inch gun with a fake scope. It's okay. just a big chunk of rod and a full mag and try to, we test the heaviest thing because okay. that creates the largest impact impulse when it, when it hits the ground. Cool. And then we cut all this open so that we can high speed video how all the parts move under so you impact. actually have you have drool video of that all. like as it's yeah. dropping and stuff. But that's the idea. I mean, that's the idea. Drew will cover how how we go about that. All right. But that's generally what we do. And we beat a gun until it is completely ruined, and then go get a new one and build it again. So nice. I like how you roll. Yeah. Here I am with I'm Drew, one of the engineers uh, who helped develop the trigger. And you did most of this like drop testing, right? Yes. Yeah, so we did uh, extensive amount of drop testing. Um, we dropped from the NATO standard, which were one of the NATO standards, which is uh, 1.5 meters, so about four feet onto concrete. Um, no stock for that. No, nope, right? we took the stock off, so we weren't actually dampening anything, and we get the harshest impact possible. Um, so we passed that drop from the NATO requirements, which is all six sides of the gun, bottom, top, uh, stock down, muzzle down, and then on either side. Okay. And then once we did that, we actually stepped the testing up to two meters, um, yeah. and we relieved. You don't like this gun. No, we do not. This is a this is a hunk of crap. Uh, so we actually relieved the receiver. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that we could see the trigger components and then we dropped um, using a high speed camera. We actually got a close up and recorded just this area um, at 30,000 frames a second to see what Damn. was actually going on, on upon impact. Okay. And then also Nick explained how you basically created these so that you could reference these. And this is more, this is outside of drop testing, right? Yeah, that's more for uh, recoil, um, recoil testing, trying to get, uh, you know, frame rates over. These markings are all in uh, tens of thousands, I believe. Damn. So we can check frames and line up and actually get reference points and compare that to frames per second, do the math and actually try to get some uh, recoil speeds. And Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. I was just looking at this and you pointed out this actually has slate pins and it's going to ship like that, right? Yeah, the, the, the whole trigger pack will come assembled with slate pins just like this. Uh, we don't have carrier tubes like a lot of other drop-ins, uh, which is great because it, we don't have the tolerant stack of another pin inside a pin yeah. inside a hole, so we can no, get actually I, do a little better. Having been on the not fun receiving end of that, I really appreciate you guys not doing that. Uh, and you know, you can act, if you look very closely, you can see that the trigger pin is a hole, but the hammer pin is a slot that allows it okay. to basically fit your receiver, any receiver, no matter how your hole location is. Gotcha. Are. Within like basically the Within tolerance the that people tolerance. are going to have. Yeah. Okay. And, and so you'll you'll drive these pins out with standard hammer yeah. and trigger pins. So if you're unfamiliar with the term slave pins, basically it is a pin that is holding all this stuff in place so that when you take your mil spec trigger pins and hammer these through, they push that out. And then I'm super excited about this. The fact that it actually has basically a spring in there. So the way your pins usually are in there is you have these arms coming down from the springs and there's notches in these. It keeps your pins from walking out and you see all kinds of elegant solutions to the problem created by having tubes go through there with like anti-walk pins and all that stuff. But this uses the exact same principle as mil spec, right? Using yeah, a spring going through there and it's gonna keep this from coming out. These pins won't walk out. Yeah, that's awesome. 
It's simple. I like it. No, that's it's simple, but I wish someone did it with some other triggers I've used in the past. And we've we we tested a whole bunch of stuff, and we've seen all kinds of different retention systems, and um, most of them don't last. So you know, like the set screw versions yeah. and the, uh, uh, everything seems to loosen up. So mm -hmm. we just went back to the way that's every mil spec trigger works. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so of course, people are going to be like. Here's my money. I want to buy this. <laughs> uh, when, keep it in mind, you guys are, so as of now, testing is pretty much done. Yes. So Very really close. it comes down to little yeah. tweaks and like getting parts put together or supplied and stuff, right? Yeah, actually, uh, this thing in my hand is almost all production parts now. We'll have one last round of testing. I would, the testing's really never done, but yeah. we'll, we'll be doing like pre-production, like final buy-off very soon. Okay. Uh, still waiting on a couple parts. You'll see this trigger isn't finished. We're like, we're just waiting on production parts. We'll do one final round of testing to make sure everything's good. And then I think we'll be shipping them in our guns, hopefully this fall. That will be awesome. Um, I'm super excited to see those. And then Honey Badger or the Sugar Weasel also, or just the Honey Badger right now? I think we'll start with Honey Badger. Mm -hmm. You have to ask Adam, he's yeah. in charge. But you know, it's I'd a- like it, it's a with the manager. Yeah, exactly. It's a premium trigger, so we'll put it in our yeah. premium product first. Yeah, and absolutely. then as we, as we get enough quantity, we'll start rolling it in, at, both in the People being able to other guns and then also or... in, buy it as an accessory. Okay. Awesome. I also like cool. that it, it looks like a honey badger. Thanks, yeah, man. I was just told that this morning. I can dig that. Which is sad because that's not what it's supposed to look like. It's just to get it light, but it ends up looking like a honey badger. Uh, no. Very <laughs> cool, man. I Well, thank you again, man. I appreciate your time and walking us through this new trigger. Do you guys have any name for it yet? The it, trigger? Uh, right now, we just call it Q trigger. Q trigger. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I imagine that'll get spiced up as we get closer to uh, to release. Once again, or not? Who knows? You got to talk to the manager. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, this is the new Q trigger as it stands, and hopefully, it's going to start shipping fall 2020 in those guns. Caveat being, it's 2020, like the year of the dumpster fire. True. So, yeah, being able to get all the parts in and everything else during everything that's going on. We'll see what happens. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.